Hi, in my previous video I created a mini pong game on Commodore 64. Now the idea behind that video was to see is it possible to create a playable pong game in basic. Now I believe that I achieved my goal and everything would stop there if not been for Mr. Jan Schmidt and his comment. Now this is what he wrote. After mini pong, what about a tiny one, all game in one sprite? Challenging? Well, what he means by that is, uh, is it possible to create the whole Pong game inside the single sprite? Now, what can I say about that? Challenge accepted. Here we are in Petsky Online Editor, and here I will explain um, the concept behind the Pong game inside the sprite. And if you're not familiar with this Petsky Editor, I will highly recommend you to watch a video from uh, Retro is New Black, uh, where he explained uh, what you can uh, do on this editor and how to use it. So highly recommended. Uh, also, if you don't want to watch entire uh, video and you're only interested in see um, a game itself, uh, you can use the index list in the description of this video to skip the chapters and select what you want to see. So, let's continue. Now, if you watched the first video where I created the mini pong game in basic, I talk about two approaches that you can uh, make to create a pong game on Commodore 64. Uh, the one is of course using sprites and this is uh, how would you generally do so you would have two sprites one for bat and one for ball and you would go to the screen and you will add a sprites to the screen and let's place the left bat here and then let's add another bat to be in the right bat let's place it here and of course we need the ball so let's add the ball and here we have a ball now let's expand a little bit those bats yes much better okay so that's it so you control the bats uh, going up and down and you control the movement of the ball uh, of course this is very um, this can be very smooth and this is a correct way to do it uh, especially if you're creating assembly language um, in an assembly language game um, you would definitely use sprites uh, and this is just fine uh, the other approach is to not to use sprites but instead I uh, use um, a Commodore 64 screen in text mode <coughs> and place the Petsky characters uh, on the screen to sim simulate the bat and the ball. So <coughs> what we have here is 40 um, columns and 24 rows and we can use um, Petsky characters to uh, create our bat here and let's say we create the right one here so these are bats and let's say we choose this petsky character to be our ball here we go now we have a ball <coughs> now instead of movement of the like we do with the sprites where we a position sprite at, at certain uh, x and y position uh, here we have <coughs> Uh, we need to move, uh, we can move only at the position where where the character could be. So let's say if this ball is going up, uh, we have to place it next ball here and delete the previous position like so. So, and we repeat the process to get, oops, to get simulation of movement, ball movement. Uh, the same goes with the bat, so if your player wants to move this bat up, we need to first add 
uh, additional character and delete the last one and repeat the process to get simulation of the movement the same goes with other pets of course and of course what i forgot to do is to draw border here okay so this is a border also using petsky characters here we go now that this looks more like a punk okay so that's uh there, there are two ways now how to do this in the sprite so let's quickly um switch to sprites and let's create a new sprite okay here we have a sprite area now what we will do is uh, treat our sprite area uh, the same we're using the same techniques as um, as we will do um, to create a pawn game with pesky characters on the normal commodore 64 screen but we don't have characters here we only can choose um, whether the certain position is uh, filled or it's not filled so is it empty or filled that's all so like so okay is it filled or empty and we'll choose some other color now we, we can do <coughs> sprites in multicolor but then we will use um, resolution and uh, movement won't be uh, uh, such a it would be very rough uh, so it won't be any good so uh, we'll choose the single color so we get uh, the high resolution sprite with high resolution and it's pong it really doesn't matter so <clears throat> first we have to draw is uh, border so let's draw the border top border and bottom border and like on the regular screen let's draw bat so left bat and the right bat here and our ball is let's say here now let's say that this ball is moving up down so we have we only can move uh, on the cell so um inside the cell so we place a ball here and delete this position we um, um, fill the next position and delete the empty the previous one and so on we repeat the process the same goes with the bed so we if we want to this uh, bed to go down we have to fill this cell and uh, delete the um, last one and repeat the process to simulate the movement to the downside so this is our pawn game uh, drawn inside the sprite and what we have here is uh, 24 pixels by 21 and uh, let's try to export this uh, data and see how it does it look like so let's select current and row byte yes okay now what you see is um, a set of data so this is a matrix that is 3 by 21 uh, three, 3 rows by 21 columns so the reason why this is so is be because the way the sprite data is stored inside of um, uh, e64 memory and uh, the rows are staying um, the same they don't uh, change so 25 rows is 25 uh, rows here but instead of 24 uh, columns we have three uh, rows two, three columns so there are three bytes so this is a, a reason for this is because um, each of these blocks of eight uh, cells is represented by a single byte so <clears throat> what we will have to do and uh, is some interesting uh, conversion between the x and y positions of the ball and bat to um, to to sprite uh, format data to create this uh, three bytes for each row and uh, also if you don't if you're not familiar now with the, uh, how this um, 
sprite, sprite data is formed i will highly recommend you to watch um, creating sprites on c64 by uh, video by no name channel so uh, it will you will learn in depth how to create um, sprites and how to generate these numbers um, but i will try to explain it a little bit more uh, inside the code so this is it and uh, now we have our sprite let's place it on the screen so let's edit the screen and let's uh, to, 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 let's delete the screen first um, let's delete all of these elements we don't need this all we can all we need is to course add sprite and so here we go this is our pawn game placed on the screen and we can place it anywhere um let's expand a little bit to see expand x well, okay now uh so we this is what i meant by using both of the these techniques so uh, one technique is used to create a pawn game inside the sprite and of course the, the other techniques with the sprites is used to place the sprite on the screen of the commodore 64 to be visible and because this is sprite we can um, uh, place it anyway we can move it all across the screen and while at the same time you can play a pong <laughs> game inside the sprite so it's quite entertaining um so let's switch to the code and see how that looks like so this is our code written in c language uh the game is now called tiny pong because it's smaller than the mini pong um i will not go through all of the code because um it's, it would be uh, much uh, interesting, but I will go through some significant uh, parts. Um, so, firstly, uh, we have here defined our two sprites. Uh, one sprite is used uh, for the game itself, so <clears throat> where uh, this first one, where we have where we uh, play the game. And the second one, the second sprite is displayed or shown uh, when, the, when the score is made. So this is it. This is some variables for the ball uh, and the bat and the screen and some additional variables for the sprite itself. And uh, here we have a couple of um, uh, functions that are... Um, significant here uh, they are used to uh, convert our, um, our ball x and y coordinates and of course uh, um, for the bat also uh, into the um, sprite data so into, into the sprite um, coordinates so <clears throat> And the way they use uh, is, of course, we have to, uh, first of all, we don't have uh, X and Y positions inside the sprite. We only have um, 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 an array of uh, data, of bytes. So we have to convert our um, X and Y position of the ball to exact position um, in this array. So this the, this right position uh, right pose function uh, uses that and right uh, right uh, at certain position the sprite uh, into into uh, memory and uh, these functions get bit x and y and set bit x and y they um, convert the x and y position of the of the ball uh, into um, uh, byte for the sprite in certain position and then uh, they send it to write pos functions that writes that into memory of Commodore 64 in exact uh, 
place where it should be written. So <clears throat> we have here some bitwise uh, operations and some um, logic uh, to convert uh, x and y positions. And we use one function to set bit, so to place, uh, to fill the cell in, into into uh, in, inside the sprite. And the second uh, function is used to clear that uh, bit. And we have some sound, of course. Um, I was able to make um, add sound. And we have scores, of course. So uh this part here is actually when you score i switch from one sprite to show uh the second sprite which represents the that you score and of course we have a function that move a ball so this is uh this function is um similar or almost exactly the same like you would move a ball on the screen uh you have to keep uh, track where the ball is uh, hit the upper or bottom uh, border uh, did it uh, collide with the bat and so on just the regular stuff so this is it a uh, couple of ifs to check uh, whether the ball passes the bat and we do some scoring and then we have a function that check for the key uh, so again i use this technique for the from the no name channel uh, that use uh, two keys to control both uh, both bats so they are moving in the opposite directions um, I think that's a very clever way to uh, make a make a, make it uh, fun to play and of course the main functions uh, so here we clear the screen we draw uh, screen so we set up initial arena that's um a pong arena inside the sprite then we set up the sprite itself so place it under the uh, screen of course and then we have a simple while loop that constantly goes and um, this uh, additional variables and uh, modulus is simply quick and dirty way to to set up the timings and uh, make it all look uh good and smooth so that's it that's the whole game uh, you probably want to see this game in action so uh, let's build the game and see how does it look like so just one moment please here we go and this is it this is a tiny pong a pong game made inside of sprite and you can see how tiny it is um, and because it's a sprite, we can easily make it um, double the size. Here we go. And I hope that, the, that you can hear the sound also. Um, and because it's... Uh, and we can return to normal size. And because it's a sprite, we can make it move and play the Pong game at the same time. Um, quite interesting concept it's very difficult to uh, get used to a moving ball and a moving sprite and uh, in the same time uh, but um, yeah and you can stop it and this at any time and make it move again and the sprite will bounce um, around the borders around the boundaries and with the escape key we can return to default position and still continue with our game and the game has no end uh, it just keeps um, uh, tracking the score um, until it um, I guess overlaps the integers or something like that I never tested it properly um, <clears throat> so this is just a concept uh, game and of course um, there are still uh, plenty room for uh, improvements, but um, here we go. This is it. Enjoy. Tiny Pong. Pong game made inside of Sprite. And we can move to the double size also. And 
normal size and continue and do whatever you want to this so it would be interesting to maybe develop a, a game with uh, multiple sprites and each player can play his own uh, sprite his own game inside his sprite yeah, something like that so let's skip and let's try to do something else so i have another uh, version of the tiny pong just a variation i'm playing around with the sprite so now we have uh, four sprites all displaying the same same uh, game uh, and we can make it to double the size and we can play it so we created the four sprites and uh, all four sp the sprites are pointing uh, ve vectors are pointing at the same memory location for the data and so they are all <coughs> displaying the same uh, content and it's a pong game let's make it small i didn't make it move here uh, it could be fun maybe to four of the sprites move across the screen and bouncing one or, 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 or another <laughs> yeah so this is it for today uh, i hope that you enjoy uh, this uh, tiny pong video and if you did you can give it a thumbs up uh, or you can subscribe or whatever you prefer and uh, i hope to see you in the next one thank you and goodbye yeah, I hope this, that you hear the sound. Is there any sound? Mm, there is sound here. Oh, there is. There is. <laughs> yes. <laughs>